Welcome to Reddish Awareness and Safety Program. This is Ramesh working as a Chief Medical Physicist and Radiological Safety Officer in SIMS Hospital. So the content of this program is what is radiation, where it is located in our hospital, what are the effects of radiation, who is the regulatory body, how to protect from radiation exposure. So first of all, what is radiation? Radiation is the process of emitting energy in the form of waves and particles. There are two types of radiations are there. One is non-ionizing and ionizing. In the case of non-ionizing radiation, it is having a it doesn't have a sufficient energy to remove the outermost orbital electrons of an atom. Light, microwaves, lasers come under this category. Whereas in the case of ionizing radiation, it is having a sufficient energy to remove the outermost orbital electrons of an atom. So it is generally ionizing radiations are more dangerous than the non-ionizing radiations. Alpha particles, beta particles, X-rays, gamma rays and neutrons are, are the examples of ionizing radiation. This is the spectrum of radiation and this spectrum is categorized on the basis of energy. Till UV rays we are calling them as a non-ionizing radiation. Beyond the UV rays we are calling them as a ionizing radiation. So these are the different penetrating abilities of a non-ionizing radiation. So as radiation is not visible, how can we know whether there is a radiation is there or not? Answer is from the radiation symbols here. So this triangular symbol is used for the X-ray producing equipments, whereas this trifoil symbol is used for the radioactive isotopes. So radiation has wide range of application in healthcare industry. In SIMS, we are using 19 radiation gen generating equipments for the diagnostic as well as the for the cancer treatment here. Now, radiation genetic equipments in SIMS hospital. Now, uh, I will explain about the different radiation uh, generating equipments in the floor wise. Radiation oncology department minus two cancer block. Here, we are using two different two linear accelerators. Simply name uh, name it as a. We are calling them as a LA one and LA two. In the LA one, it will typically it will uh, generate the energy in the range of fifteen megavolt. Here, brachytherapy unit, which we in, in brachytherapy unit, we are using the high dose rate iridium 192 radioactive source here. In the ground floor west building, we are using two computer tomography units and one fixed X ray. Note here, we are not mentioning the ultrasound and MRI machines as they are not providing the producing the ionizing radiations here. In the first floor west building, three cath lab units for the in the cardiology department, one CM in the endoscopy and dental intraoral and dental handheld equipments in the dental department. In the first floor is building one fixed x-ray unit, one mammography unit and two mobile x-ray units. In the sixth floor is building GOT, three CM units we are using here. For measuring the radiation, the radiation units are gray, which is used for the absolute dose measurement, whereas CVET is used for the effective dose measurement. Here. So radiation present in the environment, which is called as a background radiation. Around 82% of background radiation is from the natural sources, uh, majority is from the radon gas. And uh, other sources like uranium, thorium, potassium in, in the crust and cosmic radiation from the solar system are the natural radiation, na natural radiation sources. And remaining 18% of the sources, uh, radiation sources is coming from the man-made sources like medical, x-rays and nuclear power plants. So we are living with the 2 to 3 millisievert per year and it may kill to when the radi background radiation exceeds to 4000 millisievert per year. So biological effects of radiation. So what can radiation do? Radiation is a double edged weapon. It, it may lead to the cancer, genetic effects, skin injuries, cataract, infertility, death, etc. So radiation effects are classified into two types. One is stochastic effect. Another one is the deterministic effect. In the case of stochastic effect, there is no any dose limit. It is in a probabilistic in nature, it may occur or may not occur. Whereas in the case of deterministic effect, it is having a threshold dose limit. After crossing the threshold, the effect will appear. So this is the uh, examples of the deterministic effect. If you are receiving more than 0.5 gray, then blood count temporarily goes down. If you are receiving more than 1 gray, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, diarrhea syndrome will appear here. Infertility, when the males receives more than 3.5 gray, they will get the permanent sterility. In the case of females, even for the 2.5 gray, 
if they are crossing they will get the permanent sterility from this we can say that females are more sensitive to the radiation stochastic effect which will leads to the cancer and genetic effects and there is no any threshold dose limit for the stochastic effect and the probability increases with the increase of the radiation exposure who is a regulatory body how can we um, what is, where to stop where is the safe point how can we limit the radiation exposure the answer is aerb atomic energy regulatory body and it is an in, indian regulatory body that regulates and controls the radiation exposure here so this is the small video about the aerb atomic energy regulatory board that is aerb is a government of india organization that enforces regulations to ensure radiation safety in the country it has laid down requirements that are provided in its safety code for medical x-rays so few years back arb introduced elora it is a web based application uh, to for the registering licensing and other regulatory purposes all the radiation workers are requested to register in elora the link is given here safe doses of radiation and these dose limits are given provided by the arb for the radiation worker the dose limit is 20 milli sievert per year average over 5 years for trainees the dose mil, the dose limit is 6 milli sievert per year for general public 1 milli sievert per year for pregnant radiation worker the dose limit is 1 milli sievert per year as their embryo or fetus is considered as a general public it is her responsibility of the radiation worker female radiation worker uh, to declare her about the her pregnancy and don't hesitate to uh, uh, convey the message to the concern hod and the radio local radiation safety committee to shift her duties to non radiation area and dose limits for the patient as there is no any dose limits for the patient as benefit is more than the risk but we have to make the efforts to minimize the radiation doses to the patient as low as reasonably achievable that is called as a alara suppose reduction of patient doses in diagnostic radiology suppose if you uh, any request comes uh, from the diagnost uh, from the radiologist that should be justified on benefit versus risk point of view if the uh, they need to check whether the same test can be done with the ultra ultrasound as well as from the mri and always use the standardization of techniques and procedures of the for the site specific protocols from the x ray unit and reduction of field try to reduce the uh, field as required and positioning the positioning of the patient also reduces the dose and if the in the uh, pediatric uh, x ray procedure only adult of the patient who are aged along with the ladapron uh, should be present and they should not be present in the useful beam and we should provide the ladapron to the attender safety procedures to avoid the radiation exposure that is time distance shielding effect of time so less time less radiation exposure so pre plan your uh, procedure uh, to minimize the exposure time try to maintain the more distance as possible as and shielding uh, sufficiently reduces the radiation exposure to the staff as well as the patient we are having sufficient number of personal protective equipment ppe like mobile light barrier gonals thyroid shields ladaprons etc and don't fold and dump on the floor your ladaprons always hang after usage to the hanger this is the results of the improper storage and handling of the ladaprons radiation protection and radiography procedure always always work beyond the protective barrier and always use the extendable control cable when you are using the mobile x-rays always operate the ct from the control console and always operate the mammography unit from the mobile lead barrier radiation protection uh, fluoroscopy procedure so international radiologists and cardiologists are the most likely personnel to get the highest annual doses and these are the good practices to minimize the radiation exposure staff dose increases with inappropriate x-ray tube positioning keep the x-ray tube under the couch this provides better protection from scattered radiation
avoid standing on the tube side for oblique and horizontal X-ray beam. Stand on the side of the transmitted beam, that is, on the side of the imager. Transmitted beam contains only a small fraction of incident radiation and its respective scatter. This also helps in reduction in dose to the eye. Avoid putting your hand in direct X-ray beam. The couch hanging lead flaps, lateral shield and ceiling suspended glass attenuates the radiation reaching the operator to a large extent. Reducing the doses to the patient in the fluoroscopy. Most of the radiation received by us is due to scattered radiation emerging from patient body. So, if we can reduce dose to the patient without compromising on image quality, we can also achieve reduction in doctors and staff dose. Let us see how. Maximizing the distance between the X-ray tube and the patient and minimizing the distance between the patient and the imager will help in reducing the radiation dose. Step on the paddle only when looking at the screen. Collimate the X-ray beam to the area of interest. Collimation also reduces scatter radiation and improves image quality. Minimize the fluoroscopy time and monitor the DAP, that is, dose area product values. Minimize the number of frames and cine runs to clinically acceptable levels. Employ last image hold to review clinical findings. Spread the dose by rotating X-ray tube around the patient to avoid high skin dose. Exposing the same area in different projections may lead to skin injuries like radiation burns. Magnification mode when used in image intensifier results in higher patient dose. Be aware that patient will receive more skin dose in magnification mode. Oblique projections and thicker body parts increase skin dose of patient. So try to avoid extreme oblique projection if possible. So personal monitoring devices, thermoluminescence detector, TLD. This is the small video about the TLDs. A TLD badge is a radiation dose measuring device that enables us to know whether we are working within the dose limits. Make sure you always wear your own TLD badge at chest level. Above the badge, you must wear a lead apron. It attenuates X-ray and reduces radiation dose during X-rays imaging. For added safety, use thyroid shields and protective goggles. So don't uh, leave your TLD in the X-ray room. And all user cards or unused TLD badges must return after every service uh, period. TLD dose reports are always available with the RSO level 3, TPS room, cancer block, basement 2. Thank you.